In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 inspiring furniture flips with you, and they start right now. Everybody, I am Christina Mascari of Pretty Distressed and I flip furniture and do furniture makeovers and share the whole process with you. And today I have 10 inspiring flips to share with you and I'm gonna give you updates on what they sold for or where they are today. So let's jump into makeover number one. I'm going to be tackling a smooth finish on this big hutch. I'm gonna be using a roller because I get lots of questions about that and I'm creating a custom color today. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to get this mirror off. It just really dates this piece and I have some ideas for a fun thing I wanna do on here. There's screws, so I think it's gonna be pretty easy to get off, so okay, let's cool. see how it goes. So next step is I'm gonna remove the hardware and give it a good cleaning. I know cleaning is really boring, but it's such an important step in getting your paint to stick. Okay, now that I've got all the scuff sanding done, I just need to remove this dust. So I'm gonna use a tack cloth. You can also use a damp cloth. You just wanna get all this dust off before you start painting. So I've been dying to try out this new feature that Dixie Bell has on their website called the Color Lab. Here is my beautiful custom color I wanna do. It's a beautiful green, eight ounces of my burlap, and then I'm gonna add 12 ounces of Stormy Seas to make 20 ounces of paint. So I'm gonna see how smooth of a finish I can get today by using a roller. So I'm gonna cut in on these hard to reach places like around these little trim right here. So my roller's not gonna reach all the way to the ground. So this is a part where you wanna grab that brush and kind of feather out that area that you can't reach with the roller and then smooth it back out. Okay, you might remember the mirror we had on here. I thought that dated it a lot. So I'm gonna take some of this radio weave cane and we're gonna put it in here. Okay, I'm gonna start in the corner and I'm gonna work my way down. This is a little tricky. You just have to find out the best way that works for you. But you just wanna keep pulling this really tight and make sure that your cane is not sagging. The hard part is done. All the painting is done. The cane has been attached. So now it's time to put this thing back together. So I've got my gold gilding wax. I'm just gonna take this with a little artist brush and I'm gonna touch up these hinges to make them match my hardware. All right, this piece is finally done. Just to remind you, here is what we started off with and here is the after. I ended up selling this gentleman's chest for $540. It went to a young couple in Nashville and they absolutely loved it. So I hope they're still enjoying it today. I'm gonna to be doing my first ever Ikea hack. I am so excited. I have the very popular Tarva six drawer dresser and I'm gonna be trying to make this thing look like a $3,000 restoration hardware dresser. I've bought some trim. I'm gonna to try to give it a oak wash of color. This is what I'm gonna trim my drawers out with. I think trimming it out is gonna give it more of that look of the framed look from my inspiration piece. I'm gonna start with a 120 sandpaper and then finish it off with a 220. Okay, so this dresser comes with these dinky little pools. We are upgrading that. I have these long bars that are gonna look really similar to my inspiration piece. So I'm just gonna be using some DAP plastic wood professional wood filler and filling these holes. This is becoming one of my favorite fillers recently because you can sand it in 15 minutes. So I'm gonna sand back all that wood filler I put in there and I'm just gonna scuff sand the whole piece just to prepare it for when I stain it later. Okay, there's a couple of ways you could apply this. I'm actually just gonna use wood glue. So these feet come off really easily. I have my settings all set up on my saw. I take it over to the saw and we're gonna cut it. So I'm gonna use a paint to stain today. I like to do this for two reasons. You get a more consistent finish. You're not working with an oil-based stinky uh, product. Normally I thin it down a lot and I wipe it back. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna cover up a lot of these knots because I want this to look less like pine and more like oak. So I'm just gonna water this down a little bit and I'm gonna put it on full strength.
Okay, I have the hardest part done. I have all the hardware holes drilled. I have this long black hardware that's gonna match my inspiration piece, but we need to tweak the color just a little bit. And I have some of this antique pewter spray. I really love using this on hardware. It holds up really well. So we're going to make these pewter now. I am so excited with how this turned out. I really didn't think I was gonna be able to do this, but this really looks like my inspiration piece and I totaled everything up and with the dresser and my wood and my supplies, I spent about $360 on this piece compared to the 3,500 of my inspiration piece. I ended up keeping this Tarva dresser for my youngest son. He had a really tall dresser that he couldn't get into, so this works a lot better for him. Here it is currently in his bedroom. I know, you're probably shocked it's not staged. He's seven. There's no way that his room is gonna say staged, but this is really pretty in there and it's a lot easier for him to get his clothes out, so it's a win-win. My plan for this piece is to use a custom vinyl, almost stencil-like look on the top two drawers, and then I wanna paint the body. So what I'm gonna start doing is actually prime this because it is a really slick factory finish. I wanna have a little bit of extra adhesion before I put my paint on. So I'm gonna pull all the drawers out and start priming. Since this piece is brand new, it is pretty clean, but I wanna make sure it's free of dust or any oils from people touching it or from me putting it together. So I'm just gonna clean it with some simple green and then rinse it with some water. Okay, you guys have seen me use the Zinzer 123 Bullseye before. I really like this, specifically because it's water-based and it cleans up really easily. It's gonna help with the adhesion on this really shiny factory finish. And I've grabbed the gray color because I'm gonna be painting this black and using a gray primer is really gonna help with the coverage. If you're new to Cricut, they make it super easy to use this machine. They have an app that you can download right to your phone or your iPad, and it's called Cricut Design Space. One thing I love about using this for furniture is that I can customize this. So I'm not dealing with making a stencil fit on my drawer. I'm gonna measure my drawer out and then I can put those exact measurements into my image here on the canvas. So another thing I love about the Cricut Maker 3 is that you don't have to have mats. You can use a smart vinyl. So this already has a backing on it. So I've just loaded it into my machine and I'm gonna send it from design space to my machine to cut. Okay, this primer dries really quickly, so it's ready to top coat. Before I put my paint on, I'm just gonna smooth it out with a very fine rad pad. This is about a 400 grit, and I think I'm gonna be able to get away with just doing one coat of primer, because I'm not doing this for coverage, I'm only doing this for adhesion, so I think one coat is gonna get it done. On this second coat, I'm gonna go in a different direction because I'm going for a smooth finish. I kind of wanna fill in those spots that I missed, and since there's not wood grain on this, it doesn't matter which way I'm painting. Whenever I'm top coating a dark color like this, you wanna put a little bit of my paint in here and mix that up. It's just gonna help your top coat not be cloudy when you're coating a dark color like this. This is a water-based top coat, so it is gonna look really milky white going on, which can look pretty crazy on black, so don't freak out about that as it dries down. That white cast is gonna disappear. This flip is finally complete. Just to remind you, here is the Amazon piece we started off with, and here is the custom flip I did on it. This Amazon dresser I kept as well for my oldest son. I moved out a dresser I had previously done for him and put this in here. It just fits better with the style of his room and it's held up really well. So Amazon furniture, who knew? So I have some nightstands that are in rough, rough shape, you guys. They're from the 1950s, but I think they still have some life left in them. I'm gonna show you how to prep a piece like this to get a really good finish. I spent about two hours cleaning these last night. They're so dirty and the finish is failing. It was coming off on my rag. So that is a good indicator that I need to seal these. So I'm gonna be priming them with Boss, not only to block in that stain, but it's gonna help block odor too. But before we can get to the priming, I've gotta do a lot of corrections on this. I have a lot of chipping veneer, so 
So I'm gonna fill that with a wood epoxy. This is an all-purpose putty. It is a two-part, so when you put this hardener in there, it'll start getting really hard. I like using stuff like this for really big gouges and veneer like this. Once you add the hardener, it will set really quickly, so you wanna work in small batches. Now my filler is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of prep sand this whole thing. The tops need to be stripped down completely, and I think I can get away with scuff sanding the sides, so I've grabbed a 120. We're just gonna go in and do some repair sanding. The wood would be gorgeous if there was not so much veneer damage, but it's just not, it's not salvageable. So I've patched up all those spots. We're gonna paint the bases. I'm priming today with the Dixie Belle Boss, and this is in the color gray because I'm gonna use a really dark color to finish these off. So it's good to have a darker tinted primer when you're working with a dark color. Again, like I told you in the beginning, this is gonna block odors, stains, and stop bleed through. So let's get this on. Um, I did the second coat of primer. These are looking really great. What I'm gonna do now is just sand them down a little bit to make them smooth, and then we're gonna start spraying on some paint. So I'm gonna use mostly colored greens and a little bit of Midnight Sky to create Urbane Bronze. It's a really beautiful like black, green, gray, blue. You'll see, it's gonna be really pretty. These are looking so good. I'm so excited. I'm loving the color. So it's time to top coat and protect these. When I'm spraying, I really like to use Gator Hide because it's the most protective top coat that Dixie Belle has. It's really thin, so it sprays really well. And it's gonna give me lots of water resistant protection too. And since these are nightstands, someone may be having a drink of water or something, they're gonna be touching these a lot. So this is gonna really protect it. I love the way the base in the original color is looking with my new fresh paint job. Um, I'm gonna make this look a little bit nicer by taking some Big Mama's Butter in my favorite scent, this is Orange Grove. So I'm gonna grab some of my gold gilding wax. This is one of my favorites, it's my go-to. And I'm gonna gild these little hardwares to match this a little bit. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the gilding wax on these brass hinges as well to just help them coordinate. Now that my new hardware is on, this makeover is finally complete. Just to remind you, here are the really beat up nightstands we started off with and here they are now. I did sell these nightstands for $450. They went to a beautiful family that had just moved to Tennessee from Hawaii. They were just lovely and they loved these nightstands so I hope they're still enjoying them. So I do love this finish. I loved it when I did it, but I have seen so many of these French provincial pieces done in all black and it's so gorgeous. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna use silk all-in-one paint. So this project is gonna go really fast and I'm gonna start off by removing the hardware. And I originally waxed the body and the drawers of this piece. So I'm gonna remove that with some rubbing alcohol. Okay, now that I've broken down all the wax, I'm gonna clean my piece with my white lightning. So I'm gonna add this to my bucket and add some warm water. So on these top drawers, I have a little bit of cracking, which is fine for this wood look, but that's not gonna be great for the paint. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Dixie mud in here to smooth this out before I start painting. Now that my piece is all clean and my wood filler is dry, I'm gonna sand this back and I'm also gonna scuff sand the entire piece because with silk all-in-one paint, you really wanna have the surface scuffed up. It's gonna help the paint adhere better. You can do this by hand with a rad pad. This is the very fine color. These come in a variety pack. I love these. They're really flexible and easy to use, but I have my surf prep sander that's gonna make this go a lot faster. So that's what I'm gonna use. Just to remind you, I'm gonna use this silk all-in-one paint today on my makeover in the darkest color they have. This is called Anchor. So I'm definitely keeping the hardware because this is very indicative of that French provincial style, but these are really aged and patinaed and I kind of want them to pop a lot more. So you guys know, what am I gonna use? My favorite gold gilding wax to make these shine and really pop. I'm gonna clean them off and gild them. I'm 
I just need to do a few touch-ups on the drawers. When you paint this with the drawers in, it goes a lot faster, but you can't actually hit the top of here and the sides. So I find a really quick trick to do this is grab a nice foam brush, grab your paint, and you can hit up these edges really easily. Last step for the dresser is putting on the hardware. So this is dried overnight. I'm just gonna take a soft microfiber towel and just kind of lightly buff it to polish it up a little bit. Love how this piece turned out so sophisticated. And because I redid the piece of furniture and did it really quickly in 24 hours, we saved a lot of money there. So we were able to splurge and buy all new decor and new light for this space. And it just looks so bright, so sophisticated. This dresser was done for my friend who works with me, Maggie. It is still in her dining room and she still absolutely loves it and her whole dining room makeover. If you are new here, I have been painting furniture for a long time and this table is one of the very first things that I ever painted and it is definitely in need of a makeover. This was my husband's grandma's. It was probably bought in the 80s and I've recently discovered that it is not real wood. So the only option here is to repaint this. So I thought this would be a really good time to show you if you have something old in your house that you wanna make over, you don't need a ton of stuff, you don't need a ton of skill. So it's gonna be very beginner friendly today. The first very important step of any makeover when you're painting a piece of furniture is your piece needs to be really clean, especially if you don't know where it's been or if you've used a lot of cleaner on it or polish, we need to break all of that down. So the best way to do that is to to take a TSP soap like this. We're gonna scrub everything down and then rinse it with water. Now that everything is clean and dry, I'm gonna scuff sand. To scuff sand, you can go about it two ways. You can do it by hand. These are both very fine sandpapers that I have on here, about a 220. You're just scuffing up the surface. If you want it to go a little bit faster, investing in an orbital sander, you can get one of these for around $45, $50, and they're gonna help you out. And you're gonna be able to use it around the house a lot. Once you scuff sand, you wanna make sure that your piece is free of dust. So I just have a damp cloth here, and I'm gonna wipe back that dust. This is definitely dating this piece. So what I'm gonna do is try to remove this, and then my plan is to paint it a really on-trend color. So I'm gonna do a really blue-black to kind of deepen it and make it a lot more moody. Okay, the paint I'm using today is a chalk mineral paint. This is specifically designed to go on furniture. You don't wanna just grab any latex paint or paint that you have out in your garage. When I'm doing tabletops like this, I like to go from the shortest distance from side to side, um, just because my paint's gonna dry pretty quickly. So I wanna keep this wet edge as best as I can. And I'm gonna keep all the brush strokes going in the same direction. Okay, I talked about yesterday, when you are painting with a brush, you are gonna have brush strokes. So I like to grab the super fine yellow rad pad, and I'm just gonna go back and forth against the grain of the way that I painted to smooth it out just a little bit. Once your paint is dry for two hours, you can go ahead and top coat. Now this is a lot thinner than my paint, so I'm really gonna watch out for these drips and globs. I'm gonna do a really light coat. Don't be freaked out by this white pigmentation of it. It's gonna dry down really clear and really flat. So just to remind you, here is what we started off with and here is the table after. This is my dining room table, so I obviously still have this, and it was the project that sparked my whole dining room makeover, and I am just obsessed with my dining room. It's like my favorite room in my whole house right now, so looking forward to doing more projects like that this year. I've already made over the dresser and nightstand that goes with this. It's a very dated piece. It's a piece of Stanley furniture. It's in good shape, but it is like 80% laminate, so using Beyond Paint is gonna be great today because I don't need to sand or prime to get my paint on. The first thing I need to do is modernize this before I even clean it or add any paint. So I'm gonna remove the hardware and I'm gonna cut up this base a little bit just like I did on the other pieces. Okay, now that I've got the base squared off, I just wanna smooth this out a little bit. So I'm just grabbing a sander and using a medium grit sandpaper. This is a 150. When you're prepping a piece to work with Beyond Paint, the best cleaner you can use is Simple Green. It is a degreaser. It comes concentrated like this. I've already mixed it up here. I'm gonna do heavy duty strength. So this is one part cleaner, one part water. 
Now I got all that dirt and grime and grease off. She's nice and clean, but we want to rinse all that residue back before we start painting. So I've just got some clean water and I'm going to wipe it down with a clean cloth. Okay, we're finally ready to paint after all that prep. If you are not new to my channel, you will definitely recognize this all-in-one Beyond Paint. One of my most popular makeovers on my channel was done with this, and I love it because it's so beginner-friendly for people who have never painted anything before. You normally have seen me put it on with a roller and a chip brush, but I wanted to put myself to the test today and try to spray this. You guys know I've been getting really comfortable with my Wagner sprayer and I love it a lot and I've seen people spray it, so I am intrigued. So we're gonna get this in my sprayer and spray it on my piece. Okay, that definitely went way faster than rolling, but Beyond Paint is textured, you guys. I'm interested to see how this dries down because it really does have that orange peel effect. Still, that helps it kind of get in the nicks and dings and helps you get like a better look with a piece that might be a little beat up like this. So let's keep going and see how it goes. All right, it's late in the day, I'm getting hot, but I wanna get the second coat on before tomorrow. Um, it's pretty dry, it's been drying for about two hours. You wanna allow two to four hours to dry before your second coat. And we wanna hit up the inside of the drawers since we missed that on the first pass. So I'm gonna spray the outside of these drawers and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the second coat over the entire piece. So today we're just gonna put the final touches on it. I have some cool wallpaper I wanna put on the back inside so that you can have it open and have it look really cute and then we're going to add new hardware just to remind you here is what we started off with and here is the cabinet after okay this black armoire would not sell i originally listed it at 450 and i listed it with two other pieces of furniture a beautiful dresser and this other nightstand and those two things sold right away and for some reason this one just wasn't getting a lot of interest i ended up dropping the price down to 350 still no bites on it um and then it just sat you guys and it sat and sat and sat and now fast forward to january and it was still in my space and i needed to get it out to start working for the year so i did a fire sale on it relisted on Facebook Marketplace for $150. I originally got it for 30, so I still ended up making a little bit of money off of it, but um, it was definitely priced to sell because I got about 100 messages on it, found the right person for it. She's gonna use it for homeschooling storage for her kids, so I hope she enjoys it. I am taking this super, super beat up piece of furniture and we're gonna give it a new life with some organic milk paint, but I wanna keep a lot of this natural wood. So what I'm gonna do is just start stripping this horrible latex paint off so we can see what we're working with and make a plan for this. I'm gonna be using this blue bear soy gel to strip the, as much of the paint off as I can. This is sold on the Real Milk Paints website. I've used it before on my channel and I absolutely love it. It's a lot safer than some of those other strippers out there because it's soy based. It doesn't have that burn effect on your skin um, and it works really, really well. strip this varnish off all the way down to bare wood. So I'm going to start with a 60 grit sandpaper Then we'll go through and do a 120 and then we will finish it off with a 220. Okay. Since this drawer didn't have any paint on it, I want to clean it before I start sanding. So I'm not pushing any wax or grease or anything down into the grain. So I'm just going to use some simple green degreaser, clean it off and then rinse it with some water. You don't have to use an afterwash or mineral spirits to clean the stripper off. You just need to use a degreaser or you could ease it, even use soap and water. So I'm just gonna grab that simple green again, clean it off, and then I'll rinse it with some water. Okay, now that I've got all that paint stripped off, it is clean. There are lots of places that need repairs. So I'm gonna use two different things here. I have an all-purpose putty for some really big gouges, and then I'm just gonna use plastic wood for any of those little nicks and dings. Okay, I'm ready to mix up my milk paint. I've picked a really pretty fall orangey rust color today called terracotta. If you guys haven't seen me use milk paint on my channel before, it is a little different. So it comes in a container like this. You have a marble 
and then you have your bag of powdered paint right here. So I'm gonna mix that in here with water. These are not original to the piece. This is like probably a white rubber wood um, that I've seen just, you can get these at the hardware store on Amazon. So they don't match the drawers. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of a water-based stain that I have to make them match. Just to remind you, here is the very uh, trash piece that we started off with. And here is our new treasure. Okay, this Milk Paint MCM dresser, I never got around to listing. It is still in my workspace because the feet on it are not original to it. And I'm just not super happy with them. I think this is a great candidate to build a base for. So you'll probably see it later this year on my channel. And when I build a base, I'm probably just gonna change the color of it just because I can. This burnt orange is very specific. So I kind of want to make it something that's going to be a lot more um, appealing to a broader audience when I do go to sell it. So keep your eyes peeled. That'll be coming soon. This dresser and nightstand belongs to my mom. She originally painted these a couple of years ago when I guess I was too busy to paint for her. Like, I don't know what I thought I was doing, but she wanted to get these redone and wanted to do this bold sapphire color. And if you've been around here for a while, you know I normally don't do colors that are bold like this. Her style is very traditional, kind of fancy, and she loves color. So we are gonna add a lot of color to these today, bling up the hardware. It's gonna be a lot of fun. If you don't remove wax, it's just gonna gunk up your sandpaper like this. So you really wanna use a solvent like mineral spirits. You can use vinegar or denatured alcohol to remove that wax. I'm gonna mix up some white lightning. This is a TSP cleaner. I'm mixing it with some warm water. We're gonna wash everything down and then rinse it with some clean water. Okay, when my mom painted this, she used a brush and she did the really textured look like I really liked a couple of years back, but I want a smooth finish today. So I'm gonna take some 220 sandpaper and just smooth out all those brush strokes. Okay, everything's prepped and ready to go. I have the drawers taped off. I'm gonna be using my sprayer since I have three pieces. So this is gonna save me a lot of time. These have sat overnight. They are nice and dry and stain block protected. I'm gonna sand these a little bit and then we're gonna add our beautiful bright blue color. My mom picked this beautiful color called Cape Current in the Silk Line. It's a beautiful sapphire blue. I kept the handles on because they were glued on and my mom loves them but my mom is all about the bling. So I'm gonna grab this gold gilding wax and I'm gonna gild up the handles to really make them pop. Okay, the last touch, this is a pretty old piece, so I wanna freshen up the drawers for my mom. So I'm gonna use Big Mama's Butter in my favorite scent, Orange Grove, and I just have the best dang wax brush to apply it. Do you like to see your new bedroom set? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Uh I love the way this turned out. I'm so glad my mom wanted to do this beautiful blue sapphire piece uh, because I would never do this color, but I love the way that it turned out. I love the bling on the handles. So as you saw, this is my mom's bedroom set. So she obviously still kept that. It is in her bedroom and she just absolutely loves it. Everybody that comes over to her house, she takes them on a tour into her bedroom just to see how beautiful it is. Every time I see her, she just constantly raves about it. So I'm really excited that she loves it a lot and I'm happy that I got to do it for her. So I'm gonna be doing an epoxy top on here that's gonna look just like marble. First time doing that. But to get started, I wanna add some feet to raise this off the ground and I'm gonna stain it. So let's flip it over and see how we can do that. Um, unfortunately, it has no bottom, so I have nothing to attach these feet to. So I'm gonna cut some warts to size so I can put them in here and then attach the feet. 
I bought a piece of MDF for the tabletop that I'm gonna turn into a faux marble look. And luckily it is long enough that I can cut a piece to fit on the bottom as well to screw the feet in. So I've marked my cut and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Okay, it's in. I have a nice secure surface that I can add my feet to. This is not the prettiest way to do this, but I'm fluting this whole thing. So all of this is gonna get covered up anyway. So I'm just doing it the easy way. This is in pretty good shape to stain, but it does have a little bit of areas that are really rough. So I'm just gonna take a fine sandpaper and smooth everything out before I start staining. Okay, I'm ready to stain. I'm gonna be using a water-based stain in a really, really dark brown color to mimic my inspiration piece. This is water-based, so it's gonna have really easy cleanup. It's not flammable, and I think you get more even coverage because it's more like putting a paint on versus a stain. So I'm just gonna use a little applicator pad and put this on. Okay, I love the way the stain is looking. Now we're gonna get a little bit more technical and I'm gonna flute all the way around this piece. And so I picked up these wooden dowels to do this. So I've marked off how much I need to cut. I'm gonna start with the sides cause that's gonna be the easiest. I know I'm gonna need a lot of these on both sides. So the easiest thing to do is set up my saw so I can make those cuts just boom, boom, boom. And they're gonna go really quickly. Okay, now that I got a few going, this looks really great. So I'm just using one of the dowels in between to get that perfect spacing. Okay, so I need to fill all these little tiny holes that I have made with my brad nails. I wanna save myself a little time and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my stain with the um, wood filler and hopefully I won't have to do that many touch-ups after this dries. Okay, I'm really excited. I'm also nervous. This is my first time using epoxy. I'm gonna be using the Total Boat Marbling Kit today. So it has everything I need to get that marble look on top of my MDF that I just cut. I'm gonna start by doing a seal coat. So that's gonna seal this and make it waterproof um, and just get a good base before we start adding the marbling. So let's go ahead and start mixing. Okay, now I'm gonna add some of this white pigment. That's gonna give it the marble look for our base. And you're just gonna add this a little bit, a little drop at a time until it completely goes throughout the whole epoxy mixture you just made. Just to remind you, this is the Ikea Rast nightstand that we started off with, and here is the after. I did keep this Rast hack. It's currently just sitting in a little nook that I have off of my mudroom. Um, I'm not finished with this piece. I really would like to take another stab at doing the epoxy top. I can just fix what I currently have, sand it down and try to do that finish on top of there. So I haven't finished this piece. The hardware is still not attached and the top is still not attached because I wanna play with it a little bit more. I just haven't had an opportunity to. So I don't know if I'll share that here or not, but one day this will be a finished piece of furniture. This is my kitchen table, so it is very, very dirty. So the first thing I need to do is grab some of that white lightning and clean this whole thing. I'm gonna be sanding this down to bare wood and giving it a natural wood look. I'm really excited to show you this water-based stain from Dixie Belle. So my surface needs to be really, really clean before I start sanding because I don't wanna push any of that grime or grease into the wood. I want it to be really clean before I start sanding. So I'm getting the scrubby sponge here and getting all the food bits and stuff off of here. I'm ready to start sanding and stripping this back to bare wood. I'm gonna use an 80 grit and just start sanding. So much sanding, but it's gonna be worth it. I really like the color it is now, and if I could, I would just top coat it. But if you go to top coat raw wood like this, it is gonna yellow. So what I like to do is use an all natural stain. I'm just going to use the Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain. This is a water-based stain, so it's gonna give me the same effect as using a chalk paint wash. The way I like to apply this is do a slip coat of water like this. That's just gonna help with my open time and help it evenly spread out. 
And then there's a bunch of different ways you can put it on, but I really like using an applicator pad like this. It just helps get it nice and even, but you could use a, um, a foam brush, you could use a paint brush, anything that works for you. I have let this dry overnight. Once this dried, this color is absolute perfection. I've never got to use this color stain before and I knew I was gonna love it. So I'm gonna try to maintain that as much as possible. Before I top coat though, when you do this water-based stain, it feels a little rough. Um, so before I put my top coat on, I'm just gonna sand it back a little bit with a really smooth sanding sponge and that's gonna make it nice and smooth and prepare it for my top coat. I'm gonna use Gator Hide because this is perfect for high traffic areas like this. And I'm gonna use a sponge to apply it. You just wanna make sure that it's mixed up really well. I don't like to shake it because that can get air bubbles and stuff in it. And I'm going to put it on the table in long strokes. I've let this dry for two hours. Now I'm gonna come in with that same sanding sponge that I started off with, do a light sanding in between this coat. Finishing touch, I wanna to take this galvanized pool and make it match the table that I've just redone. So I'm gonna use some gilding wax in the color bronze. Just to remind you, here is the farmhouse dining table we started off with and here it is now. I love the way this table turned out. That gray tone is gone. The farmhouse look is gone. It just has a more neutral look that is gonna just fit with anything. I still have chairs to pick out. I wanna get a new light. I wanna do some art on this wall. So you guys stick around for that, but I am in love with my new table. Okay, my bonus makeover, my kitchen table. I am loving it, but I have not gotten new chairs for it yet. I haven't got a new light for the space. I haven't got art yet. So one day I think it'll look a little bit more complete over there, but I definitely love the new finish on it and it has been holding up well for my family. This video doesn't include all of the furniture that I sold last year. So if you would like to see a breakdown of everything I sold and what it sold for, let me know down in the comments and I can make another video for you. But I just realized putting this together that I did focus a lot on stuff for my own home and enhancing my own home last year versus selling out in the market. And I really did enjoy that making my space, you know, more custom for me and really focusing on my family and my home. And it's just been a really good change for me. So we'll see what this year brings. I'm sure I'll do a mix of both things that I can sell and things that are going to enhance my home. Um, let me know down in the comments too what your favorite project was out of all of these. I would love to hear that. I hope you enjoyed these 10 inspiring furniture flips. I will leave all the info down below on the full videos and all the products I used in those videos if you're interested. I'll be back soon with more furniture makeovers and DIYs. Thanks for being here you guys and I will see you next time.